My name is Radek Suski and I am the, one of the developers of SOBI2 component, if someone doesn't know it. Um, I, I can remember as I got my first car, um, it was autumn and the street was where, where I, uh, wet and full of leaves and uh, uh, someday I, I, I approached my house, I, I may have been driving a little bit too fast sometimes. So you have to imagine as it's autumn, as it's, uh, it's raining, it's, the, the street is it's, it's wet and full of wet leaves and there was a stupid tree aside. And well, I can say, I can say since, the, since that day, I had never have another accident. <laughs> well, I'm telling you the story because um, I learned something about server security pretty much the same way. And because I would like to save you this, 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 this experience, I would like to ex uh, tell you something about the server security, what I learned so, since that day. Uh, mm. How do our people get started with Joomla? In most cases, they discover Joomla, they install it on, on the local machine and local server, and they're playing a little bit it, with it, and they become more and more enthusiastic, and then they started to build own website with, with Joomla. And eventually, someday, this, this site is ready, and they want to share this site. They want to show, show it to other. And, they, the, and then the, the search for the host begins. And uh, only one criteria in most cases for the search is the price. And this is the one most, most common mistakes. So um, let's take a look how, the, how a good Joomla host should look like. These are, in my opinion, the minimum requirements for Joomla. Anyway, if you are going, if you are considering to use Joomla 1.6, you will, you will need PHP 5.2. Uh, because uh, Joomla uh, 1.6, this is minimum requirement. Now the save mode, the save mode has to be, has to be switched off. I know many people thinking that this is a great idea to have a save mode because it's safe. It's not true, save mode is, should be switched off because safe mode isn't safe at all. And um, to be honest, if a provider offers a server, in my opinion, we have provider offers a server with safe mode on, it's most likely is trying to tell us, I don't, I don't want to deal with security issues. So I disabled all function that cause any problem and you can do nothing, nothing wrong. And um, access to SSH would be highly recommended. I will tell something about it later. And it will be also a great idea to have the possibility to access our site via SSL. Um, something about extension. Um, the first place we should take a look when, I, when we search searching for a new extension is of course the extension, Joomla extension directory. And not because this is the official site, of course this is also a reason, but the quality, quality control of Joomla extension directory team is very high. You cannot just submit any extension there, this, this extension has to work and has to be safe. And if this, this extension will be uh, discovered as unsafe, the, it will be unpublished as long as there is no patch for this extension. Um, I will, would recommend also to um, visit the second site regularly to check if one of the extensions you are using is, is not uh, vulnerable. I am basically not a big fan of developing site locally and then copy this site to, to a foreign server because in most cases it causes a lot of problems with file permission, with uh, Different server environment. You have to you have to uh, imagine if when when you when you developing a site locally, you have probably XAMPP, 
And the XAMPP is a really great tool. And, but the problem is that they offer always the newest version, the latest version of PHP, of Apache, of MySQL. And this is not the reality you will have when, you, when you're going to, to use a shared host. In most cases, there's a little bit older version, so you will get some problems. And beside them, you will go probably to copy the, all those files via FTP, and you are going to um, uh, have a lot of problem with permissions. Anyway, no matter if we, are go if we, if we want to install a website locally or a foreign server, there are some things we have to, we have to care about exactly in that moment when we're going to install Joomla the first time. Uh, let's take a look at how a typical hack attempt looks like. Uh, this is a SQL injection attempt. And as we can see, every hacker assumes that the database table prefix is JOS. And the sad truth is that in most cases it's, it's, it's right, because a lot of people don't change this setting. Unfortunately, this, this setting is a little bit hidden in the Joomla installer. But I would recommend definitely to change this setting. You have to, you have to click on the advan advanced settings tab and change this setting because if you, if you don't use the JOS prefix, you will be, this, this SQL attempt will, won't work. In my opinion, the biggest secret about the server security is to do to do things differently than everyone else does. It means to be unconventional. We all know that the default username in Joomla is admin, and the default user ID is 62. And all, every hacker knows it too. So uh, as we can see, they are trying to use it and try to get, get the password for the super admin. So the first thing we should do after we install Joomla is to change the username, the username of the first super admin. The, to change the user ID, it is a little bit more complicated, but fortunately, Nicolas, thank you very much, <laughs> have wrote a great article about it and also a small tool, and you can easily change the super admin ID with this tool. So I would recommend to visit this site and, and check out this article. Yeah. Yes, on delete. You, you can do this too, of course. Uh, if we stood study, if we study our server log files and uh, for hack attempts, we we would realize that there is a usual and pattern. Um, for example, there are many more hack attempts in summer on, on the weekend. <laughs> and also that most of these this, this hack attempts uh, are really extremely stupid sometimes. They're, they are so stupid that no matter how, 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 how bad secured our server is, it won't, you know, it, it won't work either. So the reason is very simple. Most, most of these hack attempts is caused by kids, kids without, without any, any technical knowledge how a computer works. And they have probably just, just seen metrics and they think that it's so cool to be a hacker. So, so, so they visit a lot of uh, vulnerabilities, exploit databases, collect all them, and try to execute one by one on our server on our server and probably thousand others, other servers. So how can it be that they indeed sometimes, sometimes uh, able to hack uh, an, an, an server? Does anyone heard something about the uh, infinite monkey theorem? It's a, um, it's a theory that if you have a monkey and give a type of writer an infinite time, uh, number of time, Someday this monkey will be able to, to, to write a book. And this is exactly the same. It's not, it's not the time in this, this moment, but this is simply the number of attempts. Sometimes they have to be uh, su successful. 
Now, now we may think that's great. Most, most of these hack attempts are not dangerous at all. But the problem is that even if they're not able to hack our server, to hack our server, they're causing a lot of other problems. And I would like to, I will try, <laughs> present you what, what happens when a server is under attack. Which, which script? No, you say create a, a heavy load. Yeah. Is there, so you, I'm, I'm, I'm <coughs> able to create such a heavy load that will bring the website to standstill. They won't be able to serve the HTTP. Th this is the, 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 the thing I would, I would like to show you. Oh. OK. <laughs> Start a virtual machine because no more, normally, um, in the reality, if you have um, web chat um, a hosting package, is this no more normally in this case that it, it works on on a, on a virtual machine on a physical server on this physical server a virtual ma machine is installed and there there is your uh, web space. So I I I started a virtual machine with Ubuntu and Joomla installed there. No. Hmm. Now I'm going to connect to the server with SSH. I started a monitoring tool on this on this virtual machine. Now I need this one. Okay. So I'm not, now, now I'm going to, to start an um, for uh, an, a kind of hack attempt. And I would like to sh show you what, what happens with the CPU, for example, or with the memory, if I'm going to start it. Okay. It works.
try it one more time. It works now, I think. Okay. No. Hmm. It's very strange, no, really. Okay, okay, I stopped this. This was a disaster. I'm really sorry about it. I have tried to, to uh, tested it before and work. It's great, and, and I have no idea what, what is going now, uh, wrong now. Anyway, if. Please? Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, wait, wait a minute. We, we have a cable here. But let's go over um, local host. Let's try it. <laughs> Yo, okay. Let's hope it works now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Great, thanks, Nicolas. So as we can see, the CPU is going to be overloaded, and we, the, the memory is almost out of memory now. If we, if we, um, Alu, it's working uh, further in in few seconds, a few minutes, probably this, this virtual machine will be that. And this is exactly what happens if, for example, several hackers trying to, to, to attack our, our website. I know uh, at this moment what I started here is about 100, uh, 100 uh, hack attempts at, at the same time. It's normally not really uh, probably that someone is, that's 100 hackers at the same time trying to uh, hack our site. But this is also not very probably that we have virtual machine with only one side. In most cases, uh, there can be even thousand, thousand uh, websites on one virtual machine. So if we consider that we have thousand, about thousand websites on one virtual machine, it's very probably that, that hundreds of, the, of this website at, are under attack at the same time. So with this um, not very s successful uh, hack attempts, we can we can put our, our server down, and it's 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 dead now. It doesn't work anymore. Okay. So let's take a look what we can do to protect our website. Um, we have indeed a very powerful tool called HTXS. Of course, if, if um, uh, you, are, you, you will need a host package which supports this because, because uh, this is uh, necessary that they work. Uh, if, you, if you don't have server with uh, HTXS or web package with HTXS support, that is only one solution. You should change your provider because this is uh, something very, very useful and I, th I think it should be standard at the moment. Um, the default Joomla, the default Joomla um, HD access contains already several entries to, to protect our website, uh, to improve, in, improve the security. Um, one of them is, for example, commented out normally. I, I have, I have uh, commented it <laughs> uncommented it out to show you um, this is this is the idea is to um, prevent access to XML files and the idea is behind this is very very simple it's mo most one of the most basic 
um, uh, ideas in case of security. Simply disclose as, as little information as possible. The problem with this code is um, that it prevents access to any XML file within, uh, within our, our site. And if you, are, um, uh, have, if you have, for example, a sitemap for Go Google, Google will, be, will not be able to access uh, this file. So it won't work. Mm -hmm. and won't work. <laughs> exactly. I have a little bit other solution. Anyway, I don't know if, if, if it w will, will help also. Um, I have wrote a piece of code to, to prevent access to XML, PHP, and any file within several com uh, directories, like, like here, components, modules, template, and plugin. Why PHP files? Uh, because one of the most common hack attempts is that the hacker is trying to uh, use a vulnerability in third party components. And he is most likely trying to access a file which is part of an extension directly, because he knows that this file um, is vulnerable. And normally, it is not, not necessary that some files which are part of extension are access it direct, directly, because normally you, are, you go always via index, index PHP from Joomla. The problem is that, that after all, some, some components need this, this uh, access to own file directly. So if you are going to use this code, which I recommend, um, you should check if, you, if this code doesn't dis disturb us in some way uh, functionality of that party component. Um, an another conclusion from studying our uh, server log files is that, that uh, most of the hack attempts are executed with specific user agents. For example, here's, uh, here, uh, these are the, the, the three, most, three most popular of them. Um, to be honest, I have never seen, never seen that the li uh, Perl library or Indie library has been used for something other than hacking sites. And the wget um, is a little bit other story because this is also a tool which allows you to download some files from web server directly or even to download completely a website. And I am using these this tools by myself. For example, if I have found some interesting website and I fear that this website will disappear someday, so I create a local copy of this website. Um, so the decision, if you are going to, to block this, uh, this uh, late, less, less uh, user agent has to be your own. Anyway, I, I would highly recommend to block this first <laughs> to library and Pell uh, and Indie library. So let's study our log, log files again. Um, I have studied log, a lot of our uh, own, own, my own log files and also a lot of entries in different vulnerabilities databases. And um, if you take a look, at, at, uh, if we're go, going to do the same, we will, not, we will realize that in almost every SQL uh, hack attempt, there are at least these words union and select or conquered, on in most cases even all, all these words. So, so I wrote a piece of code to 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 um, prevent access to the website if the if the user um, uh, uh, execute a URL query which contains the word conquered and then an opening bracket, or the this word union select and then opening bracket. On union, all select without opening bracket, <laughs> because because the union all select. Um, th this is not not very possible that that you have uh, some URL con contains all these three words. Mm. 
Oops. <laughs> so let's put it together and, and, and we have a, a, a perfect HD access to prevent the most common um, hack attempts. As you can see, I removed this uh, wget from here and I have also uh, improved a little bit this code. I have added additional uh, directories here. And uh, anyway, the most, most important change I did here is to change the, we have in the previous version here, the letter F, which no, normally uh, causes that if someone uh, tried to execute this hack attempt, he um, becomes as respond code forbidden for 403. It's, it's, uh, of course, it will prevent uh, access to, 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 the, uh, to, the, uh, to this file, but it also will tell him this file is there. And <coughs> considering this motto, as I told this before, disclose as little information as possible. So it is better solution to tell them, to tell them hacker, that the file is not there. We don't have it. And return the 404 does not exist. So much about the HD access. Um, uh, another problem, another problem we should consider is the security to, of the connection to our website. For example, if we're going to um, log in in the admin panel of Joomla or on the front end of Joomla, or if we are going to use the FTP to transfer f uh, files to our web server, all this information between this server are uh, exchanging in, in plain text as well the username and password. So that means that everyone who can listen to this connection can see exactly our username and password and the same here by FTP connection. So now if you are wondering why, why our website, well, why your website still isn't hacked, I can calm you down. It is not so simple to listen to this connection. As I said, mm -hmm. This is, let's imagine this is the connection to our web server. This is the computer we are using and this is our web, web server. Um, the first place someone could hack our connection, listen to this connection is the, the computer we are using. I know it, it sounds maybe a little bit funny, but uh, let's imagine that we are in internet cafe. So everyone who can use the same computer before and then after could install some, some, uh, some program to catch our connection data. Um, this, this device, this is a symbol for uh, Ethernet hub. So um, if we are connected with our computer, though, to this device, it means that every computer connected to, to this Ethernet hub can read this data we are sending and receiving. The good news is that ho uh, to the, today almost no one is using Ethernet hubs. In most cases, we are using Ethernet switch. And Ethernet switch is an intelligent device and does not share the data between all computers connected to this, to this uh, switch, it knows most, in most cases exactly wh which computer is connected to which ports and sending the data, the data to the right port. Um, if we are at home or, or in the company, at work, we are in most cases in the next step connected to a DSL modem and this connection is forwarded to our ISP, to our um, internet service provider. Via phone line, it means that everyone who can listen to our f telephone could theoretically also intercept this connection. In the next step, this data is, this data is incoming by our 
internet service provider, it will be decoded back in the digital signal and sent via internet to our web server provider, to our hosting provider, and then, then to our server. Um, and on this way, the connection can be intercepted everywhere. But most cases, our internet service provider and web server provider cares about the security of this connection. So this is not very most likely that, that, this, that this connection can be intercepted there. So as we can see, the most critical, the most critical part of this connection is at our side. It does mean that if we are at home, connected to the DSL, to the DSL modem or switch and then DSL modem, it cannot, it cannot go, go wrong, but um, if we are internet cover or hotel or connected to an open hotspot, WLAN, Wi-Fi, Okay. Exactly. Um, another problem is also, of course, that um, we have to trust our providers. We have to trust our internet provider and we have to trust our server provider. I, I think that in most countries, it is not really a problem. But I could imagine, imagine that there are some countries um, where it could, could be a, a little bit problem. So um, how, how can we ensure that no one is listening to, to, to us, to this connection? Um, the answer is very simple. Use SFTP, it means um, file transfer protocol via secure shell or use HTTPS connection, SSL connection, if you are going to log into our site. Um, sorry. As you can see here, for example, this is the uh, similar uh, snapshot of a, inter uh, a net net network connection as I showed you before where you could, uh, where you were able, to, able to, to read the password and username. Here, in this case, this data is encrypted and it cannot be decrypted. It is uh, depend on, on, uh, on the SSL connection, SSL certificate you have, but in most cases, I, I suppose, 265. It, it, this is not possible. It, 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 there, there was ne, never, never no, no accident that someone was able, without, um, without to, to have the certificate uh, to, to broke this connection. Beg you, please? It is impossible. Yeah. There's always some... Now, uh, it, it sounds very simple, but, but it, it, it is not so simple if you, if you don't have own server. If you have own server, you can buy a SSL certificate and, and uh, install SSH uh, server and, and use it is in, instead of FTP. Uh, but unfortunately, um, there is no, still not enough providers offering SFT, SFT, FTP and also SSL. Some, some provider offers sometimes so-called SSL proxy. It means they, they have own SSL server to which you can connect and they forward this connection to your website. And because this, this uh, SSL server, SSL proxy is most in cases in the same building as your web server, there is no danger that someone could catch this connection. 
Now, um, even if we, if we have a provider uh, which, which al allow us to use the SSL connection, we need a SSL certificate, um, which are in most cases very expensive. We can also use a self-made SSL certificate, but if we are going to log into our site, we will get a, in almost every browser a warning about untrusted connection, an insecure connection. Now, if we are going to use it just for us to log in in the backend, it's not that bad. I think we can ignore it because we know it's our website. But it would be also a great idea, I think, that you provide this possibility for every of our user of, the, of this website. What is this? Okay. Now, the strange thing with the SSL certificate that no one really understands and no one really no, no one really knows why, why they are ex so expensive. Especially if we consider that most, most SSL certificate provider, they are able to create it fully automatically. So they have no cost. But they want from, from us about 100 euro or, or dollar for every certificate. There is, there is um, fortunately, at least one company which offers fully free SSL certificate. Okay, um, let's talk about username. One of the most forgotten thing is that the username is almost as important as the password. It is very simple. If the, if the hacker know already our, our username, he need only to guess our password. That means that one of two, uh, two um, things of our security has been broken. And Joomla, and Joomla in this case is really great because you can use, for example, white spaces for use, e e within the user, your username. And it's, if I remember also a lot of other special characters. So why, we, why don't we use something other as our full, full name, like on the left side? Why don't we use something, something funny or even something stupid like this? Passwords. Automatic generated password is, of course, a really great idea, but the problem with this is that most password generator I found creates password like this. And, and if we are going to use it as our password, we, we, we cannot remember it, so we, can, we have to uh, make a note of it somewhere. Okay. <laughs> um, and this is, of course, also a security risk because uh, if we are put this in our monitor in the company everywhere who came in our office is able to use to, to, to read our password. Um, <laughs> therefore, we have created some kind of um, memory-friendly password generator. Um, and it was for us, but if someone would like to use it, um, feel free. <laughs> The idea behind this is that, that it generates a kind of, of uh, artificial world. And if we can tell it, if we can articulate it, we can remember it. Mm. <laughs> okay, I, I, um, I think we have also agreed that if someone uh, put his file permission to 777 on a shared host, um, uh, he is getting to be criticized. Um, the question is, if I set my files to 777, am I going to be hacked? The answer is no. The short answer is no. The long answer is yes, bad. It means... Um, let's take a look at how the permission on Unix system works. I have no much time, so <laughs> a little bit. Um, 
the, the, permission, the permission of our file in a Unix, uh, Unix system are described, uh, described through three digits. Um, each of these digits describes the permission for the, u for the owner of this file, for the group, or for the world. The most, most common mistake is the permission for the world, because uh, world does not mean every, every human of the world. It does mean every user on this computer, every user who can access the same computer. So if we are going to set our files permission to 777, it could be overwritten only to our user, which has a client on the same server. So why, why sh we should no, not do this? Why we should not set our user, uh, file permission to 777? It can be that our server is not configured properly. It can be that some client on the same server has been already hacked and he, can, he is able to access our file and the hacker would be able to access our file on our web hosting uh, route or web route and hack our site, site in this way. Um, if we have access to the PHP in the file, um, we can uh, configure uh, some, some additional setting here. I have, every, I, I have, I have uh, read very often the recommendation to disable dangerous function. I cannot fully agree with it. Because uh, a function is a tool in the hand of the developer. He can be used as every hour, uh, other uh, tool in the wrong or the, the, the right way. Uh, for example, in the, in the Sobi, uh, down, uh, the, the download plugin for Sobi 2 components, we are using the function exec, which is usually listed as dangerous function to increase the security even. And um, the only two functions I, I think that really not, not needed are this, these two, because these are functions for, um, for process um, management, and this is not, not something that you are going to use as PHP developer. Normally. Of course, no matter how outside the website security is, it doesn't, 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 make, max, doesn't <laughs> make much sense if our workstation we are working for or, uh, is, is not secured enough. Uh, there, are, there was um, a big wave of hacked, hacked uh, sites uh, some time ago. Um, and the people were searching for a security hall in, in, in Joomla and in Drupal and WordPress and uh, at the end they find out that there was a new virus collecting FTP access data and sending them to, to the hacker. So if we are, so if we are going to use, if you are using Windows, especially if you are using Windows, um, it would be a good idea to have an actual antivirus program and uh, some kind of good firewall. <laughs> And um, no matter how, how good a site is secured, it is always possible that some a new security hole has been detected, uh, discovered in, uh, in the software you are using. And uh, some hacker is, is, is able to, uh, to, to exploit it. So uh, for the end, the most important most important, the number one of every rules in, in case of security is this one. Backup, backup, and one more time, backup. And again, <laughs> a little bit advertising for you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay.